Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to China Discovery's Official. Today, we will explore one of China's greatest engineering marvels, the routes commonly known as highways in the clouds. Far from a fairy tale or a poetic concept, highways in the clouds is a technical term for roads built at elevations above the cloud layer, traversing majestic mountain ranges and profound gorges, operating persistently in unbelievably harsh weather conditions. If you thought China had only one such route, you were mistaken. This nation of over a billion people has constructed an entire system of highways in the clouds, turning what seemed impossible into reality. These projects are not merely transportation routes. They are testaments to the ingenuity, resilience, and strategic vision of Chinese engineers who have been and continue to reshape the global infrastructure landscape. For audiences who appreciate remarkable figures and outstanding achievements, the stories of these routes are sure to astonish you. China has not only achieved records, but has also consistently surpassed itself, setting new benchmarks in the construction industry. Join us on a journey to discover three extraordinary routes, three engineering challenges that China has brilliantly resolved, pushing the boundaries of nature and technical science. First, we will visit the Sichuan-Tibet Expressway, G318, a route where engineering had to learn to coexist with altitude. National Highway G318, especially its southern section, connects Chengdu and Sichuan with Lhasa and Tibet, and is renowned as one of the highest and most challenging routes on the planet. With a total length of approximately 2,246 kilometers, or about 1,396 miles, this route is not merely a road, but an adventure across the majestic Qinghai-Tibet Plateau. What is remarkable about G318 is its dizzying altitude changes. From a mere 500 meters, or about 1,640 feet in Chengdu, the route ascends to over 5,100 meters, or approximately 16,730 feet, at its highest point, the Mila Pass. On average, the passes along the route are all above 4,000 meters, or about 13,120 feet. It traverses more than 10 mountains exceeding 4,000 meters in height and crosses three major rivers, the Jinsha, Nujiang, and Lanchang, with many dangerous old sections now modernized into expressways. To visualize this more clearly, imagine driving from a low-lying city like Chengdu and after just a few hundred kilometers, or a couple hundred miles, you find yourself atop a mountain higher than Vietnam's Phansipan Peak. Specifically, from Chengdu to Kangding, the elevation skyrockets from 500 meters, or about 1,640 feet, to 2,560 meters, or approximately 8,400 feet, passing through the Erling Mountain Pass at 3,437 meters, or about 11,276 feet with its long, cloud-piercing tunnel. As you venture deeper, you will cross the Jaduo Mountain Pass at 4,290 meters or about 14,089 feet, where dense fog often shrouds the valleys below. Next, the section from Xindukiao to Latang is arduous, featuring the Gaoerxi Mountain Pass at 4,412 meters or approximately 14,475 feet, and the Heise Mountain Pass at 4,685 meters, or about 15,370 feet, where you can glimpse the Sisters Lakes shimmering through clouds and snow. Notably, the Dongdala Mountain Pass at 5,008 meters, or about 16,430 feet, and the legendary Nujing 72 turns are dozens of kilometers, or many miles, of dirt road with sudden ascents and descents, creating a sensation of floating in midair. The absolute highest point is the Mila Mountain Pass at 5,130 meters, or approximately 16,830 feet, the highest elevation on the entire route, snow-covered year-round, where you truly feel as if you are driving on clouds. The engineering challenge here was not merely to build a road, but to construct a route that could endure and operate under the most extreme conditions. Thin oxygen at altitudes above 4,000 meters, or about 13,120 feet, not only affects humans, 
but also reduces the efficiency of machinery and equipment. The weather changes rapidly, transitioning from intense sunshine to snowfall, dense fog, or icy conditions within mere hours. Chinese engineers had to devise groundbreaking solutions, segmenting slopes appropriately to reduce strain on vehicles and drivers, and flexibly combining the renovation of old roads with the construction of new expressways. Critically reinforcing the roadbed to counteract the thawing of permafrost was a complex problem demanding advanced material technology and profound geological understanding. The significance of G318 extends far beyond a simple road. This is not just an expressway designed to bear vehicle loads. It is a system that must adapt to human biology. It necessitates medical support stations, rest stops for altitude acclimatization, and an extremely rigorous operational protocol to ensure safety. This route is the clearest demonstration that when faced with natural challenges, engineering must learn to coexist with altitude, not merely conquer it. If G318 was a problem of altitude and survival, then the Beipanjing Expressway in Guizhou, G56, is a resounding testament to defying height, gravity, and three-dimensional space. When mentioning G56, we must speak of the Beipanjiang Bridge, also known as Duge Bridge. This is no ordinary section of highway, but an architectural masterpiece that once held the record as the world's highest bridge from 2016 to 2025, with its deck soaring 565 meters, or about 1,854 feet, above the valley floor, a figure equivalent to the height of a 200-story building. Imagine driving atop a skyscraper, not in a city, but suspended in midair, high above a profound gorge. The Beipanjiang Bridge is a critical component of the hangzhou Ruili Expressway, G56, situated in the treacherous border region between Guizhou and Yunnan. The terrain here consists of abyssal valleys with the Nizhu River or Beipan River winding below and sheer cliffs that appear insurmountable. Yet China accomplished it with a total length of 1,341 meters or approximately 4,400 feet. This bridge not only connects the two provinces, but also dramatically reduces travel time from many hours to just a few minutes. The engineering challenges at the Beipanjiang Bridge truly command the admiration of experts. Strong winds are always a significant concern at such altitudes, causing structural oscillations. Construction in a deep, remote gorge, where visibility is limited and material transport is extremely difficult, demanded absolute precision and the most advanced construction technology. Engineers opted for a steel cable stayed bridge structure, an optimal solution for bearing loads and distributing weight. To control vibrations and expansion due to temperature and wind, smart damping systems and specialized load-bearing materials were integrated. The method of symmetrical construction from both sides of the cliff, gradually connecting the two bridge ends in midair, is a technique that required perfect coordination and extremely sophisticated calculations. The significance of the Beipanjiang Bridge extends beyond its status as the highest bridge. It represents a vision that goes beyond building roads on mountains. It's about suspending roads in midair. This is where gravity becomes engineering's greatest adversary, and Chinese engineers have demonstrated their ability to spectacularly triumph over it. The Beipanjiang Bridge is not only an engineering icon, but also an affirmation of China's superior infrastructure construction capabilities rivaling and even surpassing many other construction powerhouses worldwide. Finally, we will arrive at the Ya'an Xichang Expressway, or Yashi, a composite system that challenges every limit of seismicity and operation. The Yashi Expressway, a section approximately 240 kilometers or about 149 miles long, is part of the Beijing Kunming Expressway, connecting Ya'an and Xichang in Sichuan province. This is one of the most difficult engineering projects in China, if not globally, costing up to 3.3 billion US dollars and taking five years to complete. From zero, zero hours, zero, three minutes in the original video, it has been likened to a snake winding itself through a majestic mountainous landscape over 2,000 meters, or about 6,560 feet, 
above sea level and is precisely the highway in the clouds that many refer to. For every kilometer, this road ascends an average of 7.5 meters, a continuous and impressive gradient equivalent to 50 feet per mile, taking drivers from an altitude of 600 meters or about 1,970 feet up to 3,200 meters or approximately 10,500 feet. A distinctive feature of the Yaxi route is its extremely complex and unstable terrain. This road traverses high mountains, deep rivers, and notably up to 12 major seismic fault lines. This means that engineers not only had to contend with extreme altitudes, steep gradients, and harsh weather, but also had to account for the risk of earthquakes and landslides. This was not merely about solving one problem, but a complex matrix of simultaneous geological, topographical, and environmental challenges. To address this composite system challenge, China deployed a colossal engineering complex, including 270 viaducts and 25 tunnels, with a total tunnel length reaching 41 kilometers, or about 25.5 miles. Among these, the Genhaizi Viaduct stands out, situated at an altitude of 2,500 meters, or approximately 8,200 feet. This is the world's first reinforced concrete truss bridge, measuring 1,811 meters, or about 5,942 feet, long and 24.5 meters, or about 80 feet wide, featuring 36 spans and towers 117 meters, or about 384 feet tall. With its lightweight steel structure and special design, the Genhaizi Bridge is frequently shrouded in clouds, creating a sensation like a roller coaster in the sky. Additionally, the Kagangi and Tuawu double spiral tunnels are the world's first small radius double curved spiral tunnels. They help overcome a 450 meter or about 1,476 foot elevation difference within a four kilometer long or about 2.5 mile long V-shaped canyon, minimizing impact on the mountain and its surrounding environment. This is an innovative solution for safely and efficiently managing steep gradients, a feat rarely matched by any other construction worldwide. The significance of the Yashi route is a testament to an engineering philosophy. A road can only operate effectively when all its technical components are perfectly integrated functioning as a synchronized ecosystem. It required not merely isolated bridge and tunnel construction techniques, but a comprehensive strategy to manage seismic risks, optimize traffic flow on steep gradients, and ensure safety under all conditions. The completion of the Yakshi route in just five years, despite such complex geological and engineering challenges, is an astonishing feat demonstrating China's superior infrastructure development capacity and speed. This route operates as an engineering ecosystem where every component is crucial and connectivity is the key to success. Through these three magnificent routes, the Sichuan-Tibet Expressway, G318, the Beipanjiang Bridge, G56, and the Ya'an Xichang Expressway, Yashi, we have witnessed the three core engineering problems that China has brilliantly resolved. G318 represents the challenge of survival and adaptation to extreme altitudes. The Beipanjiang Bridge is a declaration of conquering height and gravity in three-dimensional space. And Yashi is a masterpiece of integrated systems where engineering must confront and manage a multitude of challenges from seismicity to operation. It is noteworthy that China did not construct these roads merely to set records although they have continuously broken numerous world records. The ultimate purpose of these projects is to connect the most inaccessible regions, bringing opportunities for economic and social development and improving the lives of millions of people. As the China Daily observed about the Yashi Expressway, this is not just a picturesque road, but also plays a crucial role in enhancing life and supporting sustainable economic development for the Western Sichuan region, a land dubbed the land of the clouds at the edge of the sky. This strategic vision is clearly demonstrated in many other infrastructure projects across China, not just the three routes mentioned. Consider the Qinghai-Tibet Expressway, G109, nearly 2,000 kilometers, 
or about 1,243 miles, long with an average altitude of 4,000 meters or about 13,120 feet, and its highest point at Tangela Pass at 5,231 meters or approximately 17,162 feet, traversing permafrost regions, or the Xinjiang Tibet Expressway, G219, the world's highest road with an average elevation above 4,500 meters, or about 14,760 feet, and five passes exceeding 5,000 meters, or about 16,400 feet, passing through the uninhabited Chengtang region or the Yunnan Tibet Expressway, G214, with its diverse landscapes ranging from tropical forests to plateaus, still featuring many sections above 4,000 meters, or about 13,120 feet. These figures are not just records, but also testaments to China's relentless construction capabilities, overcoming all geographical barriers to realize its vision of nationwide connectivity. These highways in the clouds were not built merely to impress. They were constructed so that people could travel through places previously almost inaccessible, enabling the flow of goods, tourism, and cultural development. This is a bold national vision, a steadfast commitment to eliminating all geographical barriers, bringing prosperity to every region and every citizen. It is a vision the world is watching and it cannot be denied that China is leading the 21st century infrastructure race. These marvels are not just concrete and steel. They are symbols of an iron will, of limitless creativity, and of a nation always striving for new heights.